Kimberly, I want to tell you a little bit about my best-selling pattern, Social Butterfly. This is a fat quarter quilt and it uses my new line with Moda fabrics called Gooseberry. It also comes as a mini quilt and it uses a lot of scraps. And it's available in PDF and paper at the Fat Quarter Shop. Today I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to piece Social Butterfly. It's not a difficult quilt, but there are a lot of pieces, so one of the steps is organization. How I keep all of my pieces organized are alphabeties. So as you can see here, I have all of my pieces laid out. Now I'm ready to piece, and I like to use the Aurifil cone. I go through a lot of thread, so I buy the cones, and this color is 2024. The main technique that we use for Social Butterfly is connector corners. The concept of connector corners is adding triangles onto the top of your block, and we do this by taking squares and marking a diagonal line on the back of each square. I did that with my friction pen, and the reason I love using friction pens is the line will disappear when you use your iron. So you'll place your connector corner blocks right sides together as indicated in the pattern. Then you're going to stitch just right next to this diagonal line, and the reason you don't go right on top of it is because when you press it open to one or press it over to one side, if you do it right on the line, it, it, you'll notice it sort of shrinks back just a tiny bit. So to compensate for the bulk of the seam and the fold, I like to stitch just right next to the line towards the end that's going to be trimmed. And as you can see, once I sewed that line, I took my little creative grids ruler and I measured a quarter inch away and just trimmed off that end and pressed just like that. Once you have made all of your connector blocks, you can begin to assemble the pieces into columns. As you can see on this right side of the pattern, I have assembled this part into a column, and this over here, and you have the exterior here, and then you also have the center part of the butterfly. And that's just going to be mirrored on the opposite side. For the center section, you, what you'll do is you'll bring these two together, and once you've pressed that, you'll add the top piece and you'll add this bottom piece. Now don't be alarmed, you can see there's a huge space over here. Um, what's gonna happen is if you look over here to this left side, you can see it's all pieced. What you're going to do is add another connector corner. And so you can see now the reason that space was gone was just because it's really not necessary. It just, it, I didn't wanna waste as much fabric there. So you'll sew just right next to the line over here, um, just closest to the edge. And then you're gonna press that open and that will give that bottom butterfly shape. From there, you'll just have your final center column here. You can then start piecing everything together and then you'll have your block ready. Once all of the columns are sewn together to form the butterfly, you're then just gonna add a, a border around it and that saves a step of having to do sashing because then you can just sew the blocks into the rows. One last thing that I wanted to mention is that I use starch on this block. I don't always use starch when I'm piecing, but with this block, because there are so many pieces, I definitely use starch and the, the brand that I like to use is Flatter by Soak. And my favorite thing about this block, there's so many possibilities. There's a large option and there's a small option. So all of us who like mini quilts can get that option. And of course the pattern is available at Fat Quarter Shop.